Welcome back to another reading and correcting with me, Kindar, the Tiger Rights, and Ty, the Tiger Supervisor. These are where I read a chapter from one of my stories and correct it as I go. If you want to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. And if you are looking to support me, that is my Patreon. Today we are doing chapter 32 of The World, which is... Uh, before I start, a note. There will be uh, links to in the notes to the, the PDF and the, the image of the the ability tree that Dennis is looking through uh, as part of making his decision for his abilities. List my abilities divided by starting prerequisite. Show the results side by side. I'm surprised that four windows appear. Looking the list over, I'd worked out there were three trees. I think I'd put the field research inside planning ahead. The other surprise is just how much falls within momentum and how few undertaking it on the nose. When looking for abilities I could make use as a guard, it felt like the bulk of explorer ability fell under that one. That most of what I put on when planning my build fell under that instead of already being exclusively under momentum. I already have that, said, and since there isn't anything after it, uh, okay, I already have that. Uh, what do you have of that? Since there's nothing after Bob and Weave, and for the dodge bonus, it, it gives me, all right, I already have that, and since there's, there isn't anything after Bob and Weave, and for the dodge bonus it gives me, I still like it for my second ability. I won't, it won't be as useful if I focus on archery, but I figure there'll be plenty of times when I have to fight close quarters. It still comes after I've hit level 5, so my immediate decision to have, to have, my immediate decisions have to be about field research and planning ahead. Looking over the rest of taking on the nose tree hasn't changed my opinion about how it's more for showmanship than actual fighting. The field research tree feels geared towards a professional monster hunter, which I have no interest in. It's all, about, it's all boosts based on monsters they kill. In the same vein, planning ahead and the rest of its tree seem to push for the archaeologist, at least the way Grandpa Lewis talks about them and the Indiana Jones movie I watched. I can see the appeal, but my goal is still to return home after this and become a guard, which means momentum is still the tree I need to focus on. But I have to change how it looks, how I look at it. Instead of hit and run, I need to open, I need to open, the add it all day branch. That one outright means I'll be able to travel further in a day. The 50% reduction in stamina cost means I can run instead of walk. And since I need to be level five before the other abilities are accessible, I'll be at 70% reduction. And it's only six level, six more, more level levels to bring it down to basically zero, letting me run as hard as I want all day long. That's definitely going to be good for getting getting there and back. Then sprinting step increases how fast I can move, and other striding opens up teleportation. Blink seems to be more like a combat teleport, and considering I have no mana to speak of and all the ways my speed is increased, I don't think I don't know 
if it's going to be worth the investment needed to get my Aether attribute up to where it's going to be able to handle the kind of cost teleport shouldn't require, but it has to require. He doesn't know he's never looked into it. Treasure steps and windfall feel like the system's trying to get the archaeologist to spend points in this tree, which with making it easier to quickly find reward and find caches within ruins and increasing how much they get out of it. If my goal was researching ruins, I don't know if I'd want to spend 10 points just to be able to start this. Launching stride and rebounding leap are definitely more set as complement to momentum and they, re, they are tempting. Momentum might not all might not be all that useful for traveling and making sure I return home quickly, but there is something undeniably fun about running up a wall. With those, I'd be able to get a jumping start and reach higher and keep jumping any gap too large for to run across. Then the hidden run tree puts offensive capabilities in. I want to take that one. I spent so much of my life training to fight that not taking it hurts. The idea I could take it with my next level makes that even harder to resist, which makes planning my build ahead of time more important. I have four points and those have to go in momentum. The one after that has to be added all day. Then one point in bob and weave as well as hit and run makes sense. It boosts my base defense and offensive capabilities. But then I have to put the next four points in it at in at it all day so I can gain sprinting step. After that, I'm not sure. Increasing at it all day and sprinting step feel like my best choice, boost my traveling capabilities, but is there a point where it won't be worthwhile anymore? And that's eight levels away. Who knows where I'll be then? I'll probably be back home. Gaining levels isn't quick. I write launching stride and rebounding step under sprinting step with question marks. I mean, wherever I am by then, I deserve a treat, right? I'll put the page in, I put the page into the journal, then send that to the end of stylus to my inventory. I swipe the window away and invest four points into momentum, then consider my attributes. I want to increase my strength. Being human average isn't great. With the three points I have, I could get it to 13, which would move me to the next inventory tier and five extra slots and, and five extra slot. There would also be an increase in my damage, but nothing significant. But with the traveling I'm doing, it makes more sense to boost my endurance and increase my stamina. And it comes with an increase in my damage soak, so it helps my, my fighting too. But that goes up each level through my class, so doesn't it make it redundant to put more points in there? Fuck, why is this so hard? Split the difference, two in endurance, one in strength. Only, what's the point of putting anything there and not enough to get the extra slots? I keep bitching about not having enough inventory space, wasn't I? Even with the packs and backpack, my personal inventory is the only one that can hold two stacks per. More stuff is always better, isn't it? My pain groan as the a woman look at, as a woman look in my direction and offer a sympathetic pathetic smile. I guess I'm not the only one suffering through this. Of course, now I have to wonder when I, I turn into such a hoarder. It's not like I'm going out there to pile stuff in my inventory. The goal is to deliver the leather and come home. That means focusing on traveling, which means endurance gets it. Or I could wait until I need to raise a stat. I push away from the table angrily. It's not like I need to be here to deal with that. I have my abilities abilities lined up for my build and the skills I want. The attribute points I can take care of and take care of anytime I want. I stretch. Okay, how long have I been sitting here? Making my way down the stairs, I spot the lupine guard who helped me and head in her direction. Her ears turn before her head and then she smiles at me. Were you able to get the skills you wanted? I did and I was able to line up my abilities. I just wish my attributes were easier to deal with. I want more points so I can put them everywhere. She chuckles. That's where the attribute training skills comes in. I guess I run a hand over my face. Do you know where I can get a re get repair kits for leather armor? Any leather shop will have those. 
sorry, I mean the magical kind. Dealing with all that, I motion behind me, has my brains on the fritz. She chuckles. You might be able to find one at a letter shop, but your best bet would be an adventurer store. Where can I find one of those? One of them. Uh, da, 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 da. You know what? Your best bet would be the West Caravan Market, since there's a lot of wilderness on that side. On the west side, you might be able to find someone with a booth at, La at Lake Crossing, but there's no guarantee there. Thanks. I take a step. Oh, do you know where Ch the Ch where the Champlain Club is? The Explorers Club? I know of it. It's in Adelaide. She looks me over. You aren't thinking of going there, are you? Well, do you know how to use that? She nods at my sword. My skill's 18. He doesn't like my answer. I can't stop you. But if you are going there, stay on your guard. The club is in the middle of that place, and we have, we have the worst time keeping crime low there. Why did they put the club there if it's so bad? She shrugs. It was there before the area went bad. I think it dates back to before the system. Although, not as an explorer's club, of course. Just be careful, she hesitates. But if you are heading there, the club is someplace that will almost certainly have one of those magical repair kits. Explorers are always going places they shouldn't and getting themselves hurt and their stuff damaged. Are there a lot of them? She shrugs. I heard stories, that's all. Thanks for the information. Be careful, she repeats in a stern tone as I walk away. Richmond is one street south of Queen. I saw a sign on my way here. Then I walk east until I reach Sherburn, and okay, I can sort of see why this place has a bad reputation. The buildings on that side of the street look like they have been hastily put up without anyone speaking to each other. As I walk along, looking for some way in, all I see are narrows, narrow alleys between buildings that are much darker than they should be. Considering the afternoon, cons much darker than they should be, considering the afternoon sun. I reach Berkey and go along that, and the buildings continue to look in such disrepair one might fall down if I step too hard. I turn right on Elizabeth and continue to look for something that could be the club, or since I'm not seeing any, seeing someone I'd want to see, or since I'm not seeing. I'd want to set a foot. Someone. I don't know what I. Um, and, and look for something that could be the club or a secure way, a cure path deeper in. Another right on Sherburn. Sherburn, and still nothing I'd be confident about walking into all the way back to Richmond. The houses on the other side of the road have gates on their doors and windows. I don't think they'll answer if I knock. I go back to Queen and the fourth. At the fourth store, I ask. The fourth store, I ask. <clears throat> uh, someone. Finally. Knows about the Champlain Club, or at least is willing to admit to knowing and tells me it's somewhere in the center of that rat's den. You know what? Okay, you know what? No, 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 no. Something that might be the club. This is not. There. So, if I want to go there, I have to go through that. Because, she said, in the center, I find the alley that's more, that most centered on Richmond and straighten as I step into it. Grandmother often said that a lot of the time looking like you are ready to fight is enough to discourage your opponent. So, be sure to look. you look ready, and if that's not enough, make sure the pointed end goes into them before they do the same to you. 
My hope of easily finding the club disappears when the alley makes a hard right, then another, and a left before I come to a T-junction. On my right, I see Richmond. On the left, gloom from the building leaning against each other and blocking the light. They didn't look more than three stories along the road, but here it feels like they go on much higher. That's not possible within civilized zone, right? I make the left, then come across a four-way intersection. That's wide enough it might be used as a courtyard by the occupants. If there are any, this place is eerily quiet. I make a left, hoping to find a way towards the center again, but it goes on for a long while before a turn to the right. I take it, the next right will take me closer. Of course, I'm forced to go left first, then left again before there's a right, then I hit a four-way intersection, and I have no idea where to go. No idea which way to go. Eh, pick one. The worst that'll happen is I'm going to end up outside. No. That's not the worst that can happen, but I'm not thinking about having someone, maybe something, jump me while I'm here. Oh, I really wish I hadn't had that thought, because now I can't help feeling eyes on me and a shiver runs down my spine. I'm at another intersection, wondering where the outside is, or when someone will just assault me when the tension is broken by a woman's scream. I run in this direction, sword drawn, and the people at the back of the alley register after I've passed it. Three, maybe four, not well dressed. It's three, I confirm when I stand in his mouth, plus the woman on the ground clutching a ripped shirt to her chest. Stop! I order as one of them undoes his pants. The three of them casually turn to face me. Would be rapist buttoning up his pants. What do we have here? The man on the left says. He's like a reed and wavers like he's caught in the in the wind. Who cares? The one on his right says, pulling a knife. We bleed him and loot his stuff. He runs at me. I don't give him the chance to reach me. I have range with my sword over his knife, so I'm stabbing at I'm stabbing at him and swiping. And swinging. Stabbing and swinging at him. Forcing him back, but I don't follow. Getting them around me gives them the advantage. If I can just throw them away from, you keep an eye on her. Would be rap would be would be rapist says, but don't touch her. I go first. Remember, you get sloppy seconds. Okay, so against two, my odds are better. And grandmother had us practice a few times. Of course, not one of us had trained to fight with someone else, so we I don't know how how well this is going to go. But would-be rapist pulls a knife too, so I still have the reach advantage, so long as they don't throw it. I take a rapid step toward rapist, tapping and swing and swiping. Yeah, I'll keep it there. I even manage to cut him, leaving a thin red line on his chest that's bound to get infected. Unfortunately, I get too wrapped up in my success, and the other tackles me, sending me, sending my sword cuttering away. My punch to his face is reflex more than anything, and it hurts, but he backs off, holding his bleeding nose. He says something that sounds like a threat, but it's muffled by his hand. I straighten. How about you leave now? I ask, pray they can't hear the tremble in my voice. Rapist smirk, smirks, putting his knife away. Nah. Now that we're equally armed, I think it's time you learn to mind your own business. Not that he'd be, not that he's going Not that he's going to mind anything after I got him, Bloody Nose said. Wait your turn, Rapist runs at me, fist raised. I really wish I'd kept hold of my sword as he pummels me. I might have blocked a few of them. I can't tell how, I can't tell by the time I'm on the ground. I was really hoping I'd be able to soak punches. He grabs my hair and pulls. This is what you get for not minding your business. He punches me. I want to turn at him, a woman says, and I try to look away as she steps before me, bare-chested, a nasty smile on her face. She rears her foot, and I ready myself. Really? A man says. You're going to kill a man, a kick a man, not only while he's down, but while he's held there? 
and here I thought, and here I was thinking the women of this fine city were the decent were of the decent kind. And that concludes chapter thirty-two of the the world which is. If you are enjoying this, please leave a like. If you want to know when the next chapter is going to be up, subscribe and hit the bell. If you want to read the story, it is up for free on Royal Road. If you want to read ahead of that, uh, my Patreon is four or five chapters ahead at this time. If you want to listen to this live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. The links are in the note. And with that, I shall wish you a good day.